Transcendental Knowledge, text number 15. Evam Gyadva Kritam Karma Evam Gyadva Kritam Karma Purve Api Mumukshubi Purve Api Mumukshubi Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Purve Purva Taram Kritam Evam Gyadva Kritam Karma Evam Gyadva Kritam Karma Purva Api Mumukshubi Purva Api Mumukshubi Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Purva Purva Taram Kritam Purva Purva Taram Kritam Evam Gyadva Kritam Karma Evam Gyadva Kritam Karma Purvera Pimu Mukshubi Purvera Pimu Mukshubi Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Chant Evam Gyatva Kritam Karma Evam Gyatva Kritam Karma Purvai Rabi Mumukshubi Purvai Rabi Mumukshubi Guru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Guru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Ivam Gyadva Kritam Karma Ivam Gyadva Kritam Karma Purvaya Manusha Hibi Hibi Purvaya Vimukshubi Guru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Guru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Purva Purva Taram Kritam Purvai Purva Taram Kedam Vaishnavis Evam Gyatva Kritam Karma Evam Gyatva Kritam Karma Purvai Rapi Mumukshubi Purvai Rapi Mumukshubi Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Kuru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Evam Gyatva Kritam Karma Evam Gyatva Kritam Karma Purvai Rabi Mumukshubi Guru Karma Eva Tasmatvam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Purvai Purva Taram Kritam Evam, evam, thus, thus, gyatva, gyatva, knowing well, knowing well, kritam, kritam, was performed, was performed, karma, karma, work, work, purvai, purvai, bypassed authorities, bypassed authorities, api, api, indeed, indeed, mumukshubi, mumukshubi. Who attained liberation? Who attained liberation? Guru, Guru, just perform. Just perform. Karma, Karma, prescribed duty. Prescribed duty. Eva, Eva, certainly. Certainly. Tasmat, Tasmat. Therefore, Therefore. Tum, Tum. You, You. Purvai, Purvai. By the predecessors. By the predecessors. Purvataram. Purvataram. In, in ancient times. In ancient times. Kritam. Kritam. As performed. As performed. Translation. All the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature. Therefore, 
you should perform your duty following in their footsteps. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. There are two classes of men. Some of them are polluted material, some of them are polluted material things within their hearts and some of them are materially free. Krishna consciousness is required. It, it is equally beneficial for both of these persons. Those who are full of dirty things can take to the line of Krishna consciousness for a gradual cleansing process, following the regulated principles of devotional service. Those who are already cleansed of the impurities may continue to act in the same Krishna consciousness in, so that others may follow their exemplary activities and thereby be benefited. Foolish persons or neophytes in Krishna consciousness often want to retire from activities without having knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Arjuna's desire to retire from activities in, on, on the battlefield was not approved by the Lord. One need only know how to act to retire from the activities of Krishna consciousness and to sit aloof, making a show of Krishna consciousness is less important than actually engaging in the field of activities for the sake of Krishna. Arjuna is here advised to act in Krishna consciousness following in the footsteps of the Lord's previous disciples such as the Sun God, Vivishwan, as mentioned here in before, mm. the Supreme Lord knows all his past activities as well as those of persons who acted in Krishna consciousness in the past. Therefore, he recommends the acts of the Sun God who learn this art from the Lord some millions of years before. All such students of Lord Krishna are mentioned herein as past liberated persons engaged in the discharge of duties allotted by Krishna. Oma Jnana Timarandasya Vyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Unmilitanyena Prasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yadapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sadrajatam Sahagana Raghunath Anvitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patita Nam Pavanityo Vaishnavityo Namo Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Gisatari Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasadi Gorva Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare All the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature. Therefore, you should perform your duty following in their footsteps. So Lord Krishna is advising Arjuna in this way that he should follow the example of the great souls. And Srila Prabhupada in the purport refers to Vivishwan, the sun god. Now, in the, in the fourth chapter, Lord Krishna had given us the history of the Bhagavad Gita. Imam Vivishwate Yoga Proktavam Aham Avyayam Vivishwan Manave Prahur Manur Ikshvaka Ve Pravit Lord Krishna was explaining that uh, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god Vivishwan and Vivishwan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind. Manu instructed it to Ikshvaku and in this way the saintly kings received the transcendental knowledge. So Lord Krishna in the previous verse had explained his own transcendental nature. He explained that he was not in need of any results of any activities and there was no work that affected him. And he was in, uh, encouraging Arjuna also to work, but to work for Krishna, just like the sun god passed on the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. The parampara and the disciplic succession was the creation of Lord Krishna. He gave the knowledge to the sun god and the sun god passed it on. And in this way the knowledge came down from the saintly kings, the Rajarishis. They received the knowledge and they distributed it to all of their citizens. So Lord Krishna, he wants Arjuna also to accept his teachings what he's been explaining to him. Remember, initially Arjuna is reluctant to take part in the battle. He had different reasons why he didn't want to fight. He thought it's not compassionate. He thought I'll get sinful reactions. He thought I won't enjoy. He thought uh, at least the degradation of the dynasty and he couldn't make up his mind, he was indecisive what to do. Anyway, Lord Krishna dismantled each and every argument of Arjuna and he explains to Arjuna that his duty is to go into battle and to fight. And here 
Lord Krishna is saying that just as the liberated souls acted with this understanding, so Arjuna should also act with the same understanding. He should follow the example of the great souls. This point is made in many places in our scriptures. In the, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself says, uh, whatever actions are done by a great person, then people will follow their example. And whatever standards they set, everyone will follow those standards. So, uh, this principle, of course, is very common in the modern world. The whole advertising industry is based on this principle. They will show you the picture of some famous movie star or some famous athlete or whatever, some person who is very prominent in society and say, look, they're using this soap or they're using this shampoo for their hair. You know, you should also use your, this same shampoo. And this man's wearing this wristwatch. You should also get this wristwatch like him. The whole The whole advertising industry runs on this principle. And they've taken this principle from the Bhagavad Gita. Yad yad acharati shristas tatat evetarajana. Sayat pramanam kurute lokas tad anuvartiti. We, we often see this uh, verse quoted, especially when I was in India, in the newspapers, when they have the obituaries page, you know, where someone dies, some big man, a big industrialist, you know, he dies and they'll put that, they'll put his picture and then they'll put the verse below it. Yad yadach you know, whatever standards he said, you know, <laughs> encouraging every, everyone, you know, he was a great man, you know. <laughs> the guy, you know, he was a big crook probably, you know, <laughs> made a lot of money at the expense of everyone else. But because he made a lot of money, people will glorify him. Oh, he was a very successful man. Right? <laughs> Next life, he may be a dog or whatever, you don't know. <laughs> But this life, well, he made a lot of money. <laughs> That's what they think is success. So, they don't, the verse in Bhagavad Gita talks about shrestas, the, you know, a, a, a person of good character. Not just anybody. We have to know who to follow. Of course, people in this modern age, they follow the people of the lowest character. All these movie stars and so on, you know, they're debauchees, you know, <laughs> they're, they're very low characters, they're very bad qualities, but the, because they're famous, because they're in the news, people worship them. They don't know who are the real heroes in the world and who to follow. Actually, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it talks about the blind following the blind. You follow a blind person, and what is the result? If you're blind and you follow another blind person, you both go in the ditch, right? You go off the road. You, you cannot expect to reach any good destination. So, we have to follow, but we have to know who to follow. And so, in the in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it quotes a verse from Mahabharat, where it says, Mahajano yena gita sapanta. Tako pratishta shrutayo vibhina na savrashir yashyam na tam vibhinam. Dharmasya tadvam nehi tam gohayam mahajano yena gita sapanta. It's a very interesting verse, very important verse. It says that dry arguments are inconclusive. Just simply arguing, you get nowhere. In Kali Yuga, you know, people like to argue. 
You can never convince people by argument. Practically, it's a waste of time. Nobody will admit they're wrong. You know, we have a thing in ISKCON called ISKCON Resolve. <laughs> yeah. and, and you have a disagreement with someone. Okay, we'll go to ISKCON Resolve, you know. And he writes letters, and you write letters, then he writes more letters, and you get nowhere, you know. And he's convinced he's right, and you know, it, it, it's very difficult to resolve things in the Kali Yuga. Anyway, uh, the verse is saying, dry arguments are inconclusive, and Shruta Yovibhina, the Shruti, the scriptures, are also giving different opinions. You read one verse and, and, and one scripture may say one thing, another scripture says something else. Just like it may say, you know, Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam. But then you read somewhere else and it said, Ganesh is the supreme. Or it says, Lord Shiva is the supreme. And the material world is all under control of Lord Shiva. And, you're, and well, who's right? You know, people can become lost. So the, the scriptures are also difficult for people to come to any conclusion. And the great rishis, they're all speculating and they're coming up with their different opinions and one person defeats the next person, then someone comes along and defeats him, and then somebody comes after that and be, defeats that person. And you get nowhere, you know, it's just going on, one person defeating another, they never come to any real conclusion. So the verse is Dharma Shatvam Nihitam Gvayam. The absolute truth is hidden in the hearts of the pure devotees. And you can understand it simply by following in the footsteps of the Mahajans. Mahajano Yena Gata Sapanta. Follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans. Who are the Mahajans? Huh? The Bollywood Mahajans, <laughs> the, you know, the, the Netflix Mahajans, the, this, uh, so many modern day Mahajans, you know. Who are the actual Mahajans? Well, Yamaraj has told us actually, the, he named the Mahajans, Swayambhu Narada Shambhu Komar Kapilomano Pralado Janako Bhishma Balir he includes himself in it. <laughs> Yamadash, he's also one of the Mahajans. <laughs> he put himself in there. Anyway, this is it, the, the Mahajans, the original Mahajans. But we have also the modern day Mahajans. And Srila Prabhupada, in his purport, he mentions about who are actually the Mahajans in the modern day. And he talks about people like Bhaktivinoda Thakur and uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati and these kind of people. They are the modern day Mahajans. But common people, they don't know who are these people. You know. They only know, you know, the, 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 the movie stars, the football players and this, that, you know, this kind of thing. So we have to know who to follow. Who to follow? Follow the liberated souls. Liberated. What does it mean? Liberation. To be a liberated soul. Well, you should understand that liberation, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to leave this body and take a spiritual body to be a liberated soul. You can be liberated even in this lifetime. Of course, it doesn't mean you're going to get four arms either. You know, some people think liberated souls will have four arms. Not necessarily. You know, there are, in the scriptures it tells about other qualifications to be a liberated soul. There's a verse that says, Nikilas Papi Avastas tu Jivan Mukta Sauchate. Jivan Mukta Sauchate is a liberated soul. Why? Because he uses his body, mind, and words in the service of the Supreme. So they're liberated even in this lifetime.
if you use your body, mind and words for the service of the Supreme. So Lord Krishna is encouraging Arjuna in this way, to follow the path of the liberated souls. We have to be able to recognize who is actually the liberated souls. Common people, you know, this concept of liberated souls. They think if they smoke marijuana, they're liberated, you know. They take some drugs, they're liberated. They do not know what is real liberation. So we're trying to teach these things to people. And of course, Srila Prabhupada said it's very difficult, very difficult to penetrate the dull brain of people in the Kali Yuga because their brains are so covered by the material energy. We were explaining this morning how the maya covers the intelligence, right? And so covers the intelligence of people and they become more enamored by the material energy, more attached to the material body. And this is the problem. We are identifying simply with the flesh with the bones and the hair and the skin, right? We spend all our time and all our money on the body. Make the body look good, decorate the body. There's a, the body shop <laughs> <laughs> with all the creams and all the lotions and all the things you know, just for your skin. Right? But this is simply allowing people to become more entangled in the material body, to go deeper into the illusion that they are the body. It's very unfortunate. We are trying to preach, you're not the body, and there's people saying, this, get this, this cream, this shampoo, you know, decorate your body. We're trying to do something which is so different from what the modern materialistic people are presenting. So of course it's uh, not very much appreciated. People are not very much uh, thankful for our efforts in trying to present this message of Krishna consciousness. But what can we do? We cannot change the message just to suit them, you know. They are in that ignorance. We, we have the thankless task to try to awaken them and bring them out of that illusion. Just as the Lord Krishna is preaching to Arjuna and he's got to get Arjuna out of that illusion because Arjuna was also in that same predicament. He was identifying with his fa himself, his body, his family members, oh my grandfather, oh my teacher, my cousins, relatives, how can I fight? Arjuna was in the bodily concept of life. Karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prichami tvam dharma samudha chetas yashreyas chanishchitam bruitane Arjuna was intelligent. He understood his weakness. He says he, he was a because of my miserly weakness, I am confused about what my duty is. Miserly Kripana. Prabhupada talks the contra Kripana and Brahmana. Right? The Kripana, the miserly person. You know, you, miser, they have money, they won't spend it. <laughs> they won't give you donations, not, they won't give any donation, they won't buy a book, but they have money. What, what, are, they, what are they going to do? They just like to count it, they like to smell it. <laughs> They need to get married, have a wife, then they spend it for them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Arjuna was confused, but he was intelligent. He, he understood, I have to get help. 
So, Shishasti Ham Sadimam Tram Prapana. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. So, this is intelligence to approach some Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna's devotees and take instruction from them, be guided by them. That is the sign of an intelligent person to help them to overcome the material illusion. Material attachments are very, very strong. Uh, we have to change the attachment. You cannot just simply give up attachment, we have to purify the attachment. Lord Kapila told his mother Devahuti that the attachment for the material is the cause of the greatest bondage, but the same attachment for the spiritual is the cause of liberation. So Lord Kapila was telling Devahuti, you have to become attached to a sadhu. You have to find out a sadhu who can guide you, who can bring you out of your illusion. And Arjuna, of course, he was fortunate, he had Lord Krishna there with him. And so he had the, the, the best of all personalities there to guide him. And Lord Kapila, he's there to guide Devahuti. And Devahuti got instruction from Lord Kapila, who happened to be her own son. But because he is also the Supreme Lord, he could give her proper instruction for her benefit to bring her out of the illusion, right? Devahuti, she, she, she had lost her husband, he'd gone off and left her. Of course, he, he did his duty before going. He gave his wife a son and they had also daughters and they arranged the marriage for all the daughters. They were all married to qualified husbands and the Lord Kapila was there with his mother. You know, he, he, he'd given his wife a son who's an incarnation of God. You're going to have a child. You don't just want to have any child, right? You want a child who's an incarnation of God. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point, you know? You, you want a child who can liberate you, who can bring you out of material ignorance. So, Devahuti had that son, she had a son just like that and she's able, and she's in, inquiring from him, she's been told by Lord Brahma, your son will be an incarnation of God. So when the son came and the husband had gone, then the son was there and she could take instruction, she could hear from him. And that's how the Sankhya philosophy was all spoken. And so there are many examples of how people followed the liberated souls. And following the liberated souls. Uh, following the path of the great devotees. Prabhupada in the purport just talks about Vivishwan. The Vivishwan heard from Lord Krishna and he passed on that knowledge. Of course, that, that disciplic succession in course of time was, was finished. It, the knowledge was lost and the Lord had to come again and re-establish. But there's no loss in these things. The, the Lord comes, he presents the knowledge and of course in course of time it's going to be lost and things are going to happen. People change things, and they start deviating. Srila Prabhupada always warned us, he said, don't change anything. He was always telling us like that, don't change anything. Keep, don't compromise, keep the standards. You know, people, and we think, oh no, we have to change this, this is no, they want to change things, something happens, we get sometimes these problems. It's, a, it's dangerous. But we see in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Lord Krishna was saying, evam param para praptam imam raja shayo vidu sakalini ha mahata 
Yoga Nashta Parantapa. This knowledge was always passed through the line of the cyclic succession and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the knowledge was lost and the Lord had to come again and revive it. Yoga Nashta Parantapa. The, the Lord established the line, but still it, the knowledge was lost in course of time. So he had to come again and speak, it, speak Bhagavad Gita. So people some, often ask, well, why is Arjuna not in the disciplic succession? But you have to understand, Arjuna is not a teacher. Arjuna is a student. He's a student and he's hearing from Lord Krishna. So he's not in the disciplic succession. He served his part as a student and Vyas heard the conversation and Vyas wrote down the, the Mahabharat where the Bhagavad Gita is taken, Bhagavad Gita is included. So Arjuna is not one of the teachers in the Parampara. The Parampara is a line of the, the teachers. It's prominent teachers, acharyas in the line. Arjuna was not a prominent teacher, but he was a friend and a devotee of Lord Krishna. So that's why he's not in the parampara. But all the parampara, the paramparas come from Lord Krishna. Krishna gives the knowledge to Brahma, Brahma to Narad, Narada to Vyas. And then Vyas is the guru of Madhvacharya. And Madhvacharya, uh, Lord Chaitanya took initiation in the line coming from Madhvacharya. And so this is our parampara. We are presenting this knowledge with, based on the authority of the disciplic succession. It's all with evidence from scriptures. It's not just speculative knowledge. It's not just our opinions. We're not just saying what we think, but we're presenting everything based on the evidence of scriptures. We're quoting the verses from the scriptures, the words of the authorities. Lord Yamaraj tells us who are the Mahajans. You know, his, his own servants, the Yamadutas, had come to him. And they wanted to know, is there anybody greater than you? And of course, Yamaraj had to tell them, yes, that I am a servant of the one Supreme Lord. And just like Narada approached Brahma and he's asking Lord Brahma, is there anyone above you? And Lord Brahma also had to tell Narada, yes. There's the Supreme Lord. I am simply one servant of the Supreme Lord. And so they're, they're presented the truth. They, they did not hide anything. But to common people, it was appearing differently. Just like Narada was thinking, Lord Brahma is the Supreme. He could not see anyone above him. And similarly, the Yamadutas, they had only seen their master, Yamaraj, and they thought Lord Yamaraj was the Supreme. But they were not cheated. They were given proper guidance. They heard from the authority source and they got proper guidance. If we hear from the wrong person, then we can be misdirected. Just like you can go to Kumbh Mela, Kumbh Mela, every 12 years they have the Kumbh Mela at Allahabad, uh, Prayag Raj is called today, and people will go there and bathe in the holy rivers where the Ganga joins the Yamuna, it's called Triveri, Saraswati is underground, but people will go there at the auspicious time to bathe there. And at that time there are many so-called incarnations of God come there and they will all come and they will have people go around and say, come and see our, our guru, he's an incarnation, he's an avatar, you know, come and see him. And there are many people like that and many people are bewildered, they're cheating. 
What is there any actual genuine avatar? Who is really God? Who is the Supreme? So many different teachings are there. How to understand what is genuine? So, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If you follow the process, you will see the results. If you practice this Krishna conscious process, you will see the result. If you faithfully practice four regulative principles and chant sixteen rounds, then you will feel a change in your consciousness. You will feel enlightened, you will feel enlivened, and you will be guaranteed to get a much better birth in the future. And you may even be fortunate enough to get out of this material world and go back to Godhead. So liberation means above the modes of the material nature, free of the material nature. The material nature are gunas, rajagun, tamagun. We are prisoners. Guna means rope. And we are prisoners of the modes of nature. We can get free from these modes of nature with the help of a liberated soul. Right? Just like if you're tied up, if you're a prisoner, you need somebody to come and free you. So in the same way, we need some help. We need devotees' help to free us from the material nature. And that help comes in the form of association, sadhu sangha. Just like I was saying, Lord Kapila told Devahuti, become attached to a sadhu. Take help from the sadhus. They will bring you out of the material world. <laughs> So now we're going to have arti. We're going out of the material world. We're going to enter the spiritual world and take part in Lord Garanga's arti. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. Thank <laughs> you.